Hi there, my name is Hannah and I'm a naturalist at the Redfish Visitor Center and Gallery. Today, I'm going to be taking you on a little wildflower walk. Most of the flowers we will find today are blooming in early to mid-July. Some flowers may have already bloomed and died in the valley, but you might be able to find them now at higher elevations. Starting in the valley among the sagebrush, you can find this little succulent, the lance leaf stone crop. Lance leaf stone crop has bright yellow flowers and often drops its lower leaves. Along with lance leaf stone crop, you can often find this scarlet gelia. Scarlet gelia has long trumpet shaped red flowers. Scarlet gelia is easy to spot among the sagebrush. Here is some more. Mariposa lilies grow among the sagebrush as well. These elegant flowers grow up among the grasses with white petals and a dot of pink on each one. Mariposa means butterfly in Spanish, and their petals look a bit like butterfly wings. Did you know there are many types of wild onions? This one is called Hooker's Onion, and I found it growing along the east fork of the Salmon River. If you were to cut and smell one of its leaves or its stem, it would smell just like an onion. This little onion is Brandegee's onion. The flower has a very short stem. It grows in open areas and flowers soon after the snow melts. Brandegee's onion is usually white but will occasionally have light pink flowers. Another common flower you can find is yarrow. Yarrow has clusters of little white flowers that make a flat top mat. Yarrow has been used medicinally for thousands of years and was most commonly used to help stop bleeding. Occasionally you might even see a little pink yarrow. Another common flower that is blooming now is buckwheat. There are many different kinds of buckwheat. Here is a sulfur buckwheat. Sulfur buckwheat can range in color. This one's a pale yellow. While others can be a more neon and brighter yellow. Here are the two growing together. Have you ever eaten something made with buckwheat flour? Buckwheat flour is a popular gluten-free flour and is considered a pseudo-cereal, not a grain. This buckwheat is a different species than the kind we grow to make flour, but it is in the same family. This pinker buckwheat is a cushion buckwheat. The color can range from pale yellow to pink. Do you remember this one? It's lance leaf stone crop. With some more scarlet gelia and buckwheat in the background. Sagebrush is common in the valley and at higher elevations. Have you ever noticed the round ball like things growing off of the sagebrush leaves and stem? These are called galls. They are tumor like growths caused by an insect. The insect lays an egg on the leaf, and when the larva hatches, it begins eating the leaf. The larva saliva triggers a response from the plant to very quickly grow and surround the larva. The larva can then grow and live inside this new little home. However, it is not safe from danger as many other insects want to use this home. Eventually, the insect will break its way out of the gall and as an adult, and the process will start again. There are many different kinds of little yellow flowers around. Bitter brush or antelope brush is flowering with small rose-like yellow flowers. An even brighter, more showy yellow flower is the shrubby sink foil. Its yellow buttercup-like flowers are hard to miss. This one is ball-headed ground cell. It has clusters of yellow flowers. The petals are more rectangular than oblong. Thank you for joining me on this wildflower walk today. I hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for our next video to learn more about wildflowers. If you have seen a wildflower that wasn't in this video and want to learn more about it, stop by the Redfish Visitor Center. One of our naturalists can try and help you identify it, or you can look in one of our many guidebooks. We sell several great wildflower guides.